Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a weekly update. We're going to be going over some of the bigger bits of news that happened in the past week, and then we're going to be taking a look at a few specific prices of some of our favourite coins. Of course, if you follow the channel, you'll know that my favourite coins are Chainlink and Ethereum, so most of the price analysis will be surrounding these two coins. However, we will take a look at a few others as well. Of course, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord channel, the links are down below. And remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. So let's get into the video. The first interesting thing that's been happening is Bitcoin dominance has been rising in the past week. As we can see, Bitcoin is up roughly 14% on the week, while most of the other coins are flat or only slightly up. Ethereum is up roughly 4.5% and a lot of the other coins are just sitting flat. They haven't done too much in the past week or so. So it is interesting to see Bitcoin dominance rising once again. Now, if we take a look back at the past year or so, Bitcoin dominance has only been going down. Bitcoin has generally been underperforming the broader cryptocurrency market for the last year or so, and it is having a bit of a pump. Now, in my opinion, I do think that Bitcoin dominance will probably once again retrace back down. I do believe cryptos like Ethereum and Chainlink can eventually overtake Bitcoin, and that's simply because of the total addressable market. I don't think Bitcoin competes with Ethereum. In fact, I don't really think Bitcoin's related to Ethereum whatsoever, as one is comparing digital gold to a platform. So overall, I do believe that eventually Bitcoin dominance will continue to slide back down, and hopefully we'll see a few coins like Ethereum come up and overtake it. Another interesting thing to point out is a lot of the dog coins have been rising in the past week. Dogecoin has been rising, Shiba Inu coin has been rising heaps, and Floki coin has also been rising. Now, the reason all of these dog coins is because are rising is because Elon Musk essentially posted a picture of his dog on Twitter that he just bought. Now, it is interesting to see that the market's still rising for these reasons that are not tied to fundamentals whatsoever, and I do think that eventually a lot of these dog coins are going to have to fall a considerable amount, purely because the, the reason that they're rising right now is not based on fundamentals, and when we do see a bit of a liquidity crunch and a liquidity crisis, these coins simply won't be able to move, not off fundamentals. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Let's get into some of the biggest bits of news in the past week. One thing to note is there wasn't actually too many big bits of news, and the crypto markets more or less didn't have too much going on. Now, the first big bit of news is, as you can see in this photo, Sam Bankman-Fried made it to the Forbes 400 list. Now, Sam Bankman-Fried is the owner of FTX, which is a cryptocurrency exchange. He also placed very, very big bets on Solana when it was just $1, and he's a very early adopter of cryptocurrencies. He's been buying Ethereum and Bitcoin all the way back in 2013 and 2014. So, Sam Bankman-Fried is essentially the richest man in crypto, and he was just named the richest person in the world under 30, and he was very, very high up on the Forbes 100 list, having tens of billions of dollars. So, it is interesting to see that Sam Bankman-Fried is climbing up so high in the ranks, and I do believe that eventually we're going to see someone in the crypto industry being the richest person in the world. Now, the reason for this is because crypto is still a pretty small industry. Currently, cryptocurrency has $2 trillion in it. However, we know that crypto can have a lot more than $2 trillion in it, and we know this because the total addressable market is everything. Eventually, we want all stocks, all derivatives, all securities, and all gaming, essentially everything to come on chain. And when this all comes on chain, we can see cryptocurrency reaching a $200 trillion market cap and higher. Now, Raoul Paul and a lot of respected individuals do believe that this is going to be the case. Of course, if crypto reaches these heights, we're going to see a lot of very rich people, Sam Bankman-Fried included, and this is something that I am following and something I am watching. 
Now, the next bit of news is that a Bitcoin ETF has a 75% chance of approval in October, according to a crypto analyst. Now, I don't know if it actually has a 75% chance of approval or not. However, Bitcoin, in my opinion, is pumping on the news of an ETF. If an ETF comes out, a lot of people are going to be very, very excited, and a lot of people do believe that this is going to happen. Of course, the pros of an ETF is it allows individuals or it allows big firms and big institutions to buy Bitcoin while doing a lot less paperwork. As a direct result, all of these big companies that want to buy Bitcoin but they simply cannot do it will be able to buy Bitcoin on the back of an ETF and this could cause an upwards explosion in Bitcoin's price. So this will be an interesting thing and I do think this is a catalyst for Bitcoin to go higher. This brings us to the end of the news section of the video. So let's take a look at some price analysis of a few of our favourite coins. Now, the first coin that I want to take a look at is Ethereum, and Ethereum is one that's really been interesting me. And what we can notice is that Ethereum is experiencing a very similar pattern as to what it was back in April or May of 2016. We can see that Ethereum is more or less trading sideways. And I know this seems quite weird, but if we put Ethereum on a logarithmic chart and we zoom out, it does more or less look like that since around February, Ethereum has been trading sideways. It's been trading sideways for roughly 250 days if we really, really do zoom out. Now, if we put Ethereum on an auto chart, we can see that it doesn't really look like it's trading sideways. In fact, since February, Ethereum is up roughly 85%. Of course, 85% in the space of just a few months is an absolutely massive move, and it is a very volatile crypto. However, when we look at Ethereum on a logarithmic chart, we're looking at it relative to all of the returns that it's previously provided us with. Now, as we can see, back in 2015 or 2016, Ethereum was essentially range bound from roughly around $6 all the way up to $22. Now, this doesn't actually seem that range bound. $22 and $6 are very far apart from each other. It's essentially a 3.5x move. However, if we look at, uh, look at it over the long term on a logarithmic chart, we can see it was more or less a sideways trade. And then eventually, after about a year, Ethereum boomed about 177,000%, putting in some absolutely insane returns. As we can see right now, Ethereum does look more or less range bound by roughly the $1,600 mark and the $4,500 mark. It's just hanging in between $1,600 and $4,500 right now. Of course, I am one of those people who does believe Ethereum will eventually go a lot higher, and we do look like we're seeing a bit of a double top right now. If we have this double top and then Ethereum really breaks out to the upside, I do believe it could go a lot higher. Now, I do believe that $10,000 by the end of the year is a possibility. I'm not 100% sure if this is the most likely scenario, but I really could see Ethereum going to these new heights if we get a lot of new bullish momentum. Of course, if Ethereum just continues to hang around these areas, trade sideways and break out later, I won't be too concerned. Now, in my personal opinion, I do believe that Ethereum is going to go up a little bit by the end of the year and then eventually break out. And by the time we're getting up to Ethereum 2.0, which is going to be in about March or May next year, I do believe that Ethereum will be over that $10,000 mark. Of course, this is all just speculation on my behalf. Ethereum could be lower than it is today in a year or so. I don't actually know what it will be. However, you've clicked on this video to watch me speculate on the price and that's what you're doing right now so take it as you will now the next thing that i do want to take a look at is chainlink and if you watch the channel you'll know that i am a big fan of chainlink now the thing with chainlink is recently a lot of people have been quite disappointed in chainlink's returns and this isn't actually because chainlink is delivering any bad returns Relative to the US dollar, Chainlink is delivering some pretty good returns. If you got Chainlink a couple of months ago on August the 2nd, you'd be up about 100% in the space of a few months. And if you got Chainlink at the beginning of the year, you'd also be up about 100%. So why are a lot of people complaining? Well, the reason a lot of people are complaining about Chainlink's returns is because a couple of cryptocurrencies like Solana, 
Avalanche and all of these other different cryptos have put in 10,000 X returns in the space of just one year. Of course, Chainlink hasn't been able to keep up with it. However, I would just say that a lot of these coins are having some very, very quick pumps and they will fall just as fast. The great thing about Chainlink is that if we look at Chainlink over the longer term, we can see it ge generally tends to trend upwards over time. Chainlink just continues to go up and up and it never disappoints. So in my opinion, Chainlink is a great one to hold and I really do think that the returns Chainlink is putting in actually are not that bad if you continue to dollar cost average and look at it over a macro scale. So, Chainlink doesn't have those quick pumps, and one of the reasons Chainlink can't pump that quickly is because every single week the Chainlink team does sell. There is a lot of selling pressure on Chainlink. However, every single week that Chainlink is bought up, and individuals continue to believe and continue to buy in Chainlink, and its fundamentals continue to go up, just pushing it up over the long term. Of course, every time the team sell their Chainlink, the reason that they are doing this is to fund the entire world coming onto crypto. Chainlink Labs go after a lot of companies. Chainlink essentially has about seven integrations every single day, and they continue to fight for every single company. They've onboarded some of the biggest legal companies and the biggest traditional finance companies in the world, and in my opinion, Chainlink Labs are doing a lot for this space, and to simply look at the team as just selling the token is a little bit ignorant. Anyway, it is quite difficult for me to make a price prediction on Chainlink, however I am hoping that Chainlink more or less at least break their all time highs by the end of the year, and I do believe that by the end of the year it's possible that Chainlink could get up to the $100 range. Of course, this does rely on a lot of bullish momentum. Chainlink is going to have, a, have to have heaps of bullish momentum, Bitcoin will probably need to be at 100,000, Ethereum will probably need to be 10,000, and I do believe that it could would make it up to this range. However, once again, this is all just speculation on my part. If Chainlink doesn't hit $100 by the end of the year, I won't worry. And the reason I'm not going to worry is Chainlink's fundamentals continue to improve. And I do believe that if we're looking out 10 years down the line, by 2030, Chainlink's fundamentals will be about 1000x plus what they are right now. Chainlink is going to be onboarding the whole world to crypto. Chainlink is the infrastructure behind cryptocurrencies and overall I do believe that if we look out in the long long term Chainlink is going to do very well for link holders. Anyway that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, join the discord and thanks for watching the video.